Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for March 25th, 2022. So as usual, if you are here live, please join us on the chat and drop your questions on the questions tab. And otherwise, if you are watching on YouTube after the fact, you're welcome to go to twistedsage.com and join the newsletter for the 50 question Friday announcements. Hey, Ron. Hey, Saad, Kendall. Good to see everybody here this morning. As usual, thank you for, for being here and for the support. Hey, Nat. Um, so we don't have anything as far as questions from the internet today. And I don't have any cool announcements coming up. Um, we're doing a gig up in Deadwood this weekend, uh, just a little holistic fair, uh, local Deadwood, South Dakota. Um, otherwise, as far as new tools, um, oh yeah, I'm going to put together an alchemist Taurus tonight. We, we have the parts for a larger um, harmonizer ring. And then the Divine I Am Petals and Chalice Center. So hopefully here over the weekend, um, I'm going to be able to create some time. We have all the rings ready. So I want to wire that one together and see how the Alchemist Taurus goes. Um, other than that, still waiting on hearing from Silver for the Silver uh, Wisdom Wand. And... We might have to go with some heavier silver. So we're looking around for silver right now, silver manufacturers, um, and getting samples in because, well, I tell you, these, the alchemist wand, um, <laughs> the alchemist wand, the wisdom wand, maybe we'll call this one the alchemist wand. There's something different about it. It's still coming through the energetics. Um, and of course, there's so much great energetics happening right now. Um, I guess I can give you guys an update on some of the energy work that we've been doing. Um, I don't think there's actually nothing new since last week. It's just um, finding how much we we create in our in our reality that um, may not be in alignment with what is in our highest and best at this moment, and so it's just uh, clearing all those other particulates, all those other um, um, things that come in to influence the influencers in your creation, which are old emotion crap, things like that, um, old programs, belief structures, old traumas. Um, and of course, what we're getting into right now with all of that in that release work is the, the soul aspects, those other parts of the soul um, that come in as the soul steps more fully in, um, you have other parts of you that need to come in and to integrate and to get in alignment with the purpose of your creation in the here now moment versus everybody coming in and trying to put in their influential into the creation. So anyway, that's where I feel we're at right now with uh, everything as far as the consciousness work goes is just still working on that concept. So I'm going to jump over here and check questions, see if anybody has any questions this morning um, on the tools or the consciousness work. And otherwise, um, <clears throat> let's see, a couple other things. We are going to start looking at influencers, uh, social media influencers, to do unboxing videos of our energetic transformation kit. So if you know of any influencers out there in social media who have large followings and do um, and share other people's tools and gifts on their show, um, we'd love to hear about it. Please do send us an email if you have an idea of some influencers who you feel would be beneficial to get an energetic transformation kit to for them to do an unboxing with. Um, because we really want to reach a, a, a larger, wider variety of audience. Um, 
you know, it's amazing what the tools are doing for people. And the more people out there that we can get stepping into these fields, it doesn't matter if they're using these tools or not, because even if you have, um, like, like, let's say you have these tools in a household, um, it's going to be affecting so many people. It's going to affect everybody else in the household. It's going to affect everybody else that that person comes into contact with because they, it's not because of the, not that the tools are affecting everybody, but it, it is because that higher consciousness, light empowerment, um, that a person steps into that is doing the affecting of the rest of the world. So anyway, we really do want to see to get these tools out and everywhere that and right now we've um we have quite a stock going on because we keep our employees busy and um that's why we've been having a few sales i know we usually do have our annual spring sale which i totally forgot about but we just had our annual spring sale which ends today um gosh i think we're doing like 14 percent off of store wide uh, which is pretty fantastic um so otherwise, I don't know anything else. Hey, we've got some questions here, so we'll check out some questions. Thank you very much. Um, Mirna, do I need to create a link between pyramids as I get them, or is it naturally already there? Receive them at different times and hand it out at different times. Gotcha. So, yeah, as long as... No, you do not have to create a link with those pyramids. So if you get some pyramids today and then you get another batch next month, um, as long as they are coming into your hands, you don't have to have hard intentions when you're doing these because that intention is already there that you are linking your pyramids together um, because so much of the work that we were doing anymore is not based on the human intentions um, it is because it's not the human that's doing the work anymore. Um, the human, the, the only thing that the human does with the work that we do is allow to step aside and to allow, um, to allow the soul to, to be the one that does the work. So with that point taken, um, yeah, using your, your grid points does not have to be complicated or mental at all because they are going to all connect and they're going to all be working um for you with that higher perspective that you are that you are actually doing the work with for that higher perspective um so we do need to do a video tutorial sometime on the pyramids and we plan on doing a product webinar or a product video on all the tools here over the summer um and the grid points will be one that we're going to do that on um, because there is a lot of questions, but it really is super simple, easy, um, because they're, they're pretty automatic in the space that they hold. So just setting them, placing them, gifting them, sending them out into the world, um, it's going to be doing a lot of great things, whether you are conscious, focused, and, and trying to be a co-creator of that or not. And, and please, too, you can always step in as the human and put in your intentions and what it is that you wish to see, you know, I mean, so so it, it, it totally is a balance, you know, and and that's really what we're working on right now. So many of us is that balance between surrender and allowing and um, and allowing our perception to see that as something that is there in the highest and best and that truly is part of that mastery work is seeing that everything that happens to you reading into it well not reading into it but just trusting that whatever happens to you is there absolutely in the highest and best that it is not there for soul growth and learning anymore um no and that's that's the new paradigm that we're stepping into is no more soul growth and learning um Let's see, next question. What tools are necessary to update the Ascension Pyramid? Can just the Wisdom Ring be used instead of the Alchemist 3 and the Harmonic Creation Trio since the Wisdom Ring place, replaces both of these? Does the Pyramid still work with all the original tools? 
Okay, so the Ascension Pyramids, when you have the Ascension Pyramids and you have one with all the original tools in it, the Ascension Pyramids are continuously updated. So if you have the original Ascension Pyramid and you have all those original tools, like the original Wings of Talk and the original Harmonic Creation Field Trio on top, that's absolutely perfect. Um, the Ascension Pyramids are one of the phenomenal tools that we have that holds all of the updates. And so whenever we update a specific set of tools, those updates go into the Ascension Pyramids. So the Ascension Pyramids are continuously updated um, and you do not need to have the new Wings of Talk or the Wisdom Tools or the Alchemist set in that pyramid because it will contain those energies um, and you can still um, add those extra tools you can still add whatever tools crystals whatever you wish to those pyramids and you'll still notice a different flavor so i mean if you have your ascension pyramid and you decide you want to get a wisdom ring and you set on top of there yes it's still going to change the the flavor of the energy but um just because you're just adding things to that that base structure but that base structure will always carry the updates so um, any news on the wisdom generator no kendall and thank you for asking for sure um yeah i know that wisdom generator i am i think there might be something coming through with it and I think this Taurus might be uh, a step in that, this Alchemist Taurus. So once I get this Alchemist Taurus going, because we try to make a Wisdom Taurus, it, I don't know, it, just, it was just a Wisdom field. It was nothing spectacular. Um, so I'm really curious about this Alchemist Taurus to see what it's going to do. And I kind of had the feeling that it might have that might be the step that we need to get into that wisdom generator because we might have to redo that wisdom generator and put the alchemist trio and a wisdom ring in all four components of the generator not sure but um the yeah they're they're still they're still sitting on the back burner waiting for the energies to be to be brought in so um, I think we are getting closer on that wisdom generator. So thank you, Kendall. Uh, let's see. Next question. What if I placed a tensor ring over a map of an area experiencing difficulty along with some crystals and a soft intention? Most definitely use your maps with the, with the tools. You know, that's something that, um, gosh, I'm not sure if that came from Slim or if this came after Slim Sperling, but I know a lot of people who have maps and they'll put, um, you know, usually they'll take like Slim's wash tub harmonizer, you know, and just the different environmental tools, like maybe our Gaia sphere or a generator or even a ring because like our 50 questions Friday last week, where we learned how to use a wand and find, uh, so last week, what we did is we had a photograph that had a human map that had the the endocrine system on it that had the entire um um you know it had, it had the the organs that we might not know of but we could visualize that organ like a certain um you know gland in the body on this picture and we can wand the picture and then that goes to that specific organ that we have when we are sending the energy there so just like we did last week on 50 questions friday for sending energy distance by using a photo or a picture or a map or a map of human anatomy so the same will occur with a map that you use now when you set your ring there or your tool on that map um I truly believe that you can have the intention go into the heart space and have that intention that that energy is always held there. Not just when you are sitting there looking at the map with your ring on it, because that's the way it used to be was, is that you could put the ring on the map, but you had to sit there and have your attention there 
for that to be functioning and fully bringing through those energetics, whew, my wings are flapping. So yes, all you need to do now is simply go into the heart space, put that ring there, intend and see and visualize that energy in the physical location, just emitting the energy. So I'm seeing it right now that you have a, a ring and you set it on a map in the desert and I can see like just this energy just emitting in that physical location in that in that physical location um so yeah i think that's a fantastic thing to do marie is is send that energy through a map and i really do feel like we're onto something new where we can anchor that energy in and it will stay there and it will always be emitting that energy holding that space without us sitting there witnessing it the whole time so thank you for bringing that up because that is a whole, a whole new concept right now which is a beautiful thing that the things that never worked before may actually work now because oh my goodness are we becoming less and less limited in our abilities of creation is there a radiance of influence around the grid points? Um, so the grid points, they they do have about, they produce a field about the size of a home. So what we see is, is that when we, we see that when you place it in the home, that it expands. It expands and covers the home. So when you set one of these someplace, we see that it expands out and covers that space. But then as far as outside of the grid points, remember that these connect to all of the Ascension grid points, the Ascension pyramids and the Ascension grid pyramids. So there are thousands of grid points out all over the planet. And these connect, each individual one connects to all of those others that are in existence. So there are thousands of little filaments of light that go out in all directions from every grid point. These little filaments of light are actually about 13 inches wide. They're a little wall of golden fire energy. They hold that field, um, that healing field that these pyramids hold. Because remember, these are grids and they connect to all other pyramids. So that is another thing. Not only is the space that it is is in that space that it expands into, but also all the little grid points, all the little lines, the filaments of light that go to all others. So you could really see that this thing just expands in all directions. Um, so yeah, these, these little things are pretty amazing in the, in the field that, um, in the way that you can work with those fields and the fields that they hold. Uh, Nika, can any of the tools assist toning down the behavior of narcissist and sociopath around us? Do you feel they they have entity attachments that bring on the behavior or they just come in hardwired that way? It's a co-creative. It's a co-creative thing. You can't have, uh, you know, takes two to tango. It's a dance partner that that we all choose, you know, so because nothing comes into you know all energy is there to serve you all experiences are there to serve you so if there is if you are releasing that energy saying okay this is not what i wish for my soul growth and learning um which we kind of already are, are establishing that right you know we're, we're establishing that already that we are here for something new that we are here to step out of all of the old energy constructs of this universe, soul growth, learning, duality, all the stuff. So we're already all here to step into this new, this new way of being. So if you are running into like, so, so you run into the narcissist and that is in your world, either there is still something that you need from that or there is still something you're getting out of it, whether it is something you need or something that you deep down enjoy. Humans are funny that way in that we seem to enjoy suffering a lot. 
maybe it's because it's comfortable. It's something that we've always done and we got really good at it over all of these eons and lifetimes. But everything is a choice that comes into your field. It may not seem like a choice at times, but when you go in, go in, step back, everything truly is a choice in your creation. So that energy of the narcissist is still either serving you somehow or you're getting something out of it. So how do we release these energies? Oh man, use the wisdom tools, use the wisdom wand, um, use the quantum heart coil pendant. What we do is we step into that field, that cocoon that's around us, that fibrous cocoon with that light in the interior, that light that is your light untainted and untaintable. And when you are in that space and you are in the heart space where you've taken the three breaths, you're grounded, connected, and in the heart, you're in your power, you are in that space. From there, you simply put your awareness onto this individual in your life, or else you simply invite them into your sacred space. However it is, you are just putting your attention, your divine awareness, your light to them. You're not um, trying to step in and heal and fix or have judgments about them. So that's why it's so important to be in the heart space, be in that space of that light, send that light to them. And that will either change, that will change your everything with that person so you can gain all the wisdom that you need out of that if that's still why that's in your world or you can just simply have it released and let go so again you don't have to have that intention of what it is that you want to see the outcome to be because it's going to come through in the highest and best so again, it's just being in that space, shining your light and allowing whatever it is to come. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's the long answer to it. And, and the short answer was use your wisdom wand in that space and go into that space and shift your creation. You can do it. And this stuff is coming up right now for us to do. Oh my goodness, do we have a lot of wonderful things that we can do to experiment and play with, with all of these concepts of shifting our creation? Because we all have things in our creation that are maybe uncomfortable or that we don't want to see or that are causing us distress. Be in the heart, work with that space of that cocoon field and then just allow a really good one to do on the 50 questions friday is the december 3rd i keep pointing people back to december 3rd of 50 questions friday because we did this thing with the water rings um but it was the zero point space the zero point space is so huge because that that is such a wonderful exercise i would implore you to go back and check that out um, on december 3rd because when you step into that zero point space that is kind of like what we just talked about, where you simply put your divine awareness to something and it transforms it. Um, okay, so have you posted the last week's 50 questions video? I have not seen it. Oh, good question. I will make sure, Kendall. Um, I'm not sure because I download them and then Amber goes through and she does all of the, um, the timestamps the timestamp. So I'll make sure that we have both of the 50 questions Fridays up if we don't have the last week's up. Hey, Samson, is the Alchemist Taurus going to be silver or copper options for both? Can you explain the energetics of the silver quantum heart coil? Uh, so the Taurus is actually going to be a giant copper Taurus. It's about 18 inches, I think. Um, some people have been requesting those larger ones like the 888s that we used to make. Um, can you explain about the energies of the silver quantum heart coil? Yes. So the, the silver quantum heart coil is 
you know, it's bringing through that same energetics as the copper quantum heart coil. I mean, of course, the silver does have a little bit of a different flavor feel to it, but it's a subtle thing. But to me, it's 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 kind of a huge enough subtle thing that I really like the silver um, myself. But the quantum heart coil pendant um, basically is holding that space, what we just talked about, about the fibrous cocoon and your light untainted and untaintable all within that zero point space. And so that's what these coil pendants is the intention, first and foremost, is to bring you into that space to where you then become a magnet of light where you are drawing in all of your light your light in in all of its flavors um because we see your light is simply uh an experience in a lifetime or an entire incarnation so as you bring in that light that you are it just automatically draws it in um with these quantum heart coil pendants if you allow and that's the whole thing is that um we don't have to do anything but allow um and of course things are going to happen whether you allow or not but the more you allow holy smokes the faster and easier things go because a lot of times when we don't allow we get those little spiritual two by fours the nudging of the universe until we decide to let go and so allowing is so much smoother and easier um so anyway yeah i guess i don't know for sure what else to say about the quantum heart coil pendant um besides they are to me and from what i get as feedback from people is that the quantum heart coil pendant is it's simple easy and it's it's a great space um, but if you really want to step into something a little bit more intense and a little bit more, um, something that you can actually step in and really work with and do on this physical plane, because that's it is that the quantum heart coil pendant and the wisdom wands do contain that similar field that works without us actively using it. But what I like about the wisdom wands versus the quantum heart coil pendants is, is that the wisdom wands, whether they are the miniatures or the pendant size, you can, they have a little bit of a different energetics to them. They're a little bit more intense. They, they allow you to do things more versus the coil pendant, which is just very peaceful and contained. I don't know. Sorry. I, I hope that, Gives some differences on that one, Samson. Um, Mika, Micah, did you ever get around energetically mirroring the Ascension Pyramids so they're like a hall on a balance? No, I have not played with that concept yet. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, because we talked about that, about having the, um, the two pyramids, one up and one down. Uh, we talked about that last week, I believe. Let's see, what effect would you have placing a wings of talk in a river? Um, I wouldn't place the physical tool while well, you could. So the thing about the wings of talk is, is that it is uh, steel on the inside of those tines and it is a copper electroplating. So on the physical, that steel is going to rust and it won't last for very long um, staying in the river physically. Now, we teach with the wings of talk to create, to replicate it, to create another wings of talk. And you do that, um, you know, in the product video, we talk about it, it's the same as anchoring a column of light, basically, um, in that you go into the heart space and you witness it creating that column of light that's grounded, connected, and it creates that space. And that is how you can replicate the wings of talk. So you can put wings of talk everywhere you go you can put it in the river you can put it in that house as you're driving down the interstate you can put it on that cell tower um you know it's once you do it a couple of times to uh to do the energy work to replicate the swings of talk to create that column of light with it 
Um, once you do it a couple of times, it gets to be a second nature thing. So you can just, everywhere you go and everywhere you look, you can just take just a moment and a breath and put a wings of talk there. So that way you can put that wings of talk energetically in the river and it is going to do great things because it's going to shift the water as it comes through there and it's going to be carrying that vibration with it um, for who knows how long, um, maybe all the way to the ocean and farther. Um, just depends on how it's uh, acted on after the winds of talk. But so, yeah, I would certainly look at doing the energy work with the winds of talk. Um, and, you know, if you put the winds of talk in a river and if you're just speaking temporarily, just putting it in the water, um, still it's going to be doing that great effects with the water as it flows through, bringing that remembrance to it, clearing, clearing the memory of it, um, you know, the remembrance as in bringing in that consciousness, the spirit of water more, um, as well as with all the critters within the water. But then as soon as you take the physical tool out, then it's no longer doing anything. So that's why doing the energy work, replicating that wings of talk energetically in the river is it's really a, a huge thing. And if you're not into doing this kind of energy work, gosh, give it a try. It's actually really super simple, easy. Um, and if you're already working with the energy tools, this is not a huge step. Um, so simple easy it's just a and, and i guide you through the whole meditation uh peter any tool to help with third eye opening i feel so closed sometimes um so really any of the tools are going to assist with that third eye opening um we we did a gosh i did a video years ago called the pineal activation video where we took a tensor ring and it doesn't matter the size but at the time i think we were using um the brand new harmony ring at the time but you take a tensor ring and you would just sit it on top of your head you go into the heart space and then imagine this ring dropping down around your pineal gland so we just go into the heart space. So actually, do you guys want to play? Eh, well, we never did go into the heart this morning. So let's do this exercise right here and now. Grab your favorite tensor tool. Doesn't matter if it's a pyramid or a ring or a wand. As long as I can sit on your head, preferably a ring. So set the ring on the head. Close your eyes, go to the physical heart, finding your fire, your soul's light, connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light and supporting loving energy of the earth, up into the heart, connecting heart to heart with creation, breathing in that loving, supporting light of creation into the heart. Breathing in both lights, that of earth, that of creation, becoming the column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Now imagine that ring dropping down to right around your pineal gland, right in the middle of the brain. And it just sits there raising that frequency and vibration, sending all of those energies in. Now at any time, grab that physical ring and take off the top of the head. And then put your attention right there at the pineal and see if you still feel that ring around the pineal gland. If you are using a wand, we do the whole thing of running energy. Imagine your pineal gland. If you need a photograph of it, find a photograph. Imagining running that energy right into the pineal. So that's one way that we can work on the physical and the energetic of that receptor, the pineal. And then also how, you know, third eye. So third eye can also be equated with all of your gifts, which you will find in your heart. 
so we have the third eye which is you know a lot of that sight and things but the heart is where we carry our gifts our abilities because they come from the soul they come from from us from beyond the veil so just go into the heart space before you go to bed at night when you lay down in bed ask your soul to bring through all the attunements activations alignments releasings clearings whatever it is that you need to have all of your sights and abilities and knowingness come online because the clairs, the clairvoyance, the clairsentience, the clairaudience, all of the clairs, the, the, the ability to see and perceive in all of these different levels and layers perceived through different senses. Um, these are things that we all have in the clair knowing, the clairsentience, um, the, just the knowingness is one of the biggest things that we are all as humanity are really stepping into right now is that knowingness. So how do you access your knowingness? You go into the heart space to access your knowingness, your wisdom. So that work that we're doing too with this wisdom energetics, that cocoon, that fibrous cocoon and all of that light. And as we are a magnet for all of our light, that is our wisdom. That is our knowingness. So the more of our consciousness, wisdom, light that we bring in, the more that we have those abilities, the third eye and all of our abilities coming in. What if a mirror was placed beneath the, the Ascension Grid Pyramid? Would it be an upside down pyramid beneath? Oh, no. Nope. And, and that is a phenomenal idea, too. And we did talk about that one last week about placing an actual mirror underneath of, like, let's say, an Ascension Grid point. Now, the only reason that this would make anything difference energetically is because of you and your attention and your awareness and your, you know, your unconscious intentions on creating or conscious intentions on creating that reflection, creating that other energy below it. But just simply putting a mirror below there without any intentions is not going to do any, any energy reflection. The mirror is simply a, a tool of your, for your awareness, um, for you to be the one who creates that energy setup of the reflecting of the energies. So it's actually you as the creator of that and, and not actually the mirror. Um, Mirna, I was thinking about adding the elementals to a grid point. Would drilling a hole be bad? Oh no, not at all. Um, the grid points are perfectly fine to to shift and change however you wish um you know if the tips are all broken off and it's still fully functioning because there is still that golden ball of light that connects to the heart of the earth that is still present in this so it does not you know so you can do whatever you want to with these drilling holes however um to to add your elementals to these and not is perfectly fine so and thank you for doing so i think that's a phenomenal idea working with the elementals with that grid i mean they're a part of it but the more you bring them in wow yeah i <laughs> i think that's going to be fantastic um oh making it like a wind chime is what you were talking about there i think that's even a more phenomenal idea that you could hang your elementals off of here in this be your wind chime. I think that's a phenomenal idea. Um, all right. So I think we got through our questions there that we have so far. Um, and I'm just going to jump over here to the chat tab. Let's see. Um, let's see. We do have a comment here from Carla. I received my pyramid kit with the three bonus pyramids. I unpacked the three bonus ones and felt such a nice surge of uplifting energy. I held one in the palm of each hand and felt like I was the third pyramid point, creating a triangle. Do you know why? Yeah, you were definitely the third pyramid point there. Um, yeah. Humans are also a grid system on the planet. Um, we are a beautiful crystalline energy grid. 
And um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty phenomenal, Carla, that you found that you were a grid point along with the grid points. Um, yeah, because even though we're asking me questions here, I can only see the tip of the iceberg here, you guys. And that's really why we've always been told never to put uh, instructions with the tools and never to put them in a box and limit them because there are so many things that we can do with these tools and our consciousness of working with these tools. Um, so yeah, please do keep playing. Um, yeah, keep playing in all the ways that you feel compelled to, because that's it, is that these tools are also very intuitive and in that they will help you find the ways to work with them. What would happen if we glued two quantum grid pyramids together? It's relatively small and transportable. Um, you know, that's a good question. I have actually... <laughs> I've been working on, well, in the very beginning when I first made these, I, I made this um, object, this geometry, that I put a bunch of pyramids together. I glued them like this, and then I glued them coming around like this so that I created like this geometry, this ball, with all these grid points. And um, I, I didn't notice anything really shift in the energetics of it. Um, and so adding the two quantum grid points there, I'm really not sure. Again, going back to the last statement that I made to play with these and to work with these. And because there could be something here for you to work with with this. Um, I know I did make something the other night that I totally had to disassemble and tear apart. And that was, I poured a quantum grid point inside of one of these. And then I had these other quantum grid points that sat here. This thing was so flipping powerful, but it was not, not the most beneficial thing. You know, powerful energy tools are not necessarily, usually not beneficial. Subtle energy is the most powerful energy, as, as Thoth would say. But yeah, I, I don't know. I created something kind of funky the other day, messing around with um, grid points and things. And I was kind of feeling into that with this too, is that um, innately, I'm not sure what this does innately, but I feel that, um, you know, you can step in and figure out what it is that you're doing with this. I myself don't really... And I'm not a huge fan of of whatever this energetic is, but um, again, it feels like it can be shifted and changed a lot, and you can shift and change any energy. So really, um, yeah, really play. Uh, Karen, I've heard someone, I've heard some using these tools say they've had to cleanse them just like crystals. Is this true that the tools can pick up things and get dirty? Thank you for, um, okay. So, um, the clearing of the tools. So total, sorry, I have construction workers across the way. I thought somebody was knocking on the door. Um, tensor rings totally in theory. And what we see is, is that they are self clearing. As far as, um, well, and beyond theory. So once these are sealed shut, you cannot affect the physical structure of this ring. And you definitely cannot affect the energetic structure of this ring. And you cannot affect the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools. Those are very guarded, guided, protected. So... As far as our tools picking up anything that is non-beneficial energetically, we have seen only like twice ever that some being was able to come in and put a, like a sheath around the tools. And it sheathed it because it could not touch the energetics of it. 
but it like sheathed it. And then it put its own little thing on the outside. But this was this was a funky, crazy bean a couple years ago. And we've had something else happen like that too. But out of the hundreds of thousands and thousands of rings and tools out there, that's only happened like twice that we know of. Um, that something came along and sheathed it because you have to be a pretty flipping powerful being to um, to sheath these tools. So you can, um, and it depends on the tool worker because some people, you know, some people making the tools don't even make working tools and some people they only work because the intention is there and then there are very 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 few people on the planet who work with etheric templates and the etheric templates is really truly where the true power and potency of a, of a tool is you know we can make a tensor ring and the tensor fields do great things with water and electromagnetics but they're not bringing through all the consciousness and they're not bringing through all of the other work and fields and spaces and frequencies and everything that come through the specific tools that we create. Um, so, yeah, as far as these tools ever picking up and holding other people's stuff, you know, um, it's like a 99.999% rate that um, that would not happen. And it's in it again, and it was very special circumstances that you would find that these actually collect other people's stuff. Um, and I'm thinking that one of the times was actually for a benefit of a lady that it wasn't that it just occurred. Um, yeah. Anyway, so moving on here. Um, have you had any feedback about using Metatron's crystal grid or the Yantra with a tensor tool? What music do you recommend being played through a generator or Gaia sphere? Um, the Metatron's crystal grid, uh, the Sri Yantra. So the Sri Yantra is a little bit of a different critter than like the Metatron cube. Um, yeah, they, they hold a different energetics, but still, you can bring those different energetics in and and yeah, you're going to amplify, harmonize different things. So like our cell tabs, our cell tabs actually have a picture of the Taurus, the, 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 the golden fire Taurus is actually a photograph within here because that energy comes through there and then putting the ring around it just amplifies that energy. So yes, geometries, um, the, the geometry of the Sri Yantra or the geometry of the Metatron's cube, sacred geometries do carry energetics and you can, um, so like let's say you have a picture of the Merkaba and you put a ring around the backside of it, it can then with your intent, if your intention is you put this ring around the backside of the Merkaba to send that energy out and that's what's going to happen so I put that ring there and it was my intention to send that energy out so now then this is sending that energy of that Merkaba out through there so that's kind of how you could work with uh, any of those photos of like the Sri Yantra or any of the other um, sacred symbols or even Reiki symbols is you can just add that to that and then it's like um, you are sending that information into your field or broadcasting that information and then as far as the the recommended music uh, frequencies to play through a generator or a Gaia sphere um, no you know I, I did work with Slim Sperling's friends um, back in the day they created uh, this little track that has frequencies on it and it's the frequency of the rain cloud is actually one of my friends who made that frequency um, for Bill Reed and then Bill brought it to slim and so that rain cloud frequency it's actually um you know and people played that through all of the the tensor tools that slim made and people still do that and they talk about broadcasting that out um to work with the weather to to bring through you know to manifest rain clouds um 
So whatever you play in here, it can broadcast that energy. Um, you know, so if you are playing, you know, some, some nice harmonic melodies of, you know, classical music, let's say that is proven to reduce stress and calm people or whatever. And you put that in and you broadcast that, then yes, that's what you're going to be broadcasting is, is that those frequencies, properties, energetics of that music that is calming and all of that. Um, so it, that's kind of how we would broadcast with these. Um, and you can do that rain cloud frequency, but again, to me, it's almost more of, of a tool of attention than a tool that's actually really doing anything is, is just how I feel about it. Um, let's see. I need to replace the adhesive on my cell tab. What solvent would I need to use to clean off old adhesive? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, so the adhesive on the cell tabs, um, it is a two-sided florist tape. Um, so you have to manually pry those cell phones, cell phone tabs off your phone. And then once you get it off, um, you know, you could use rubbing alcohol and alcohol will, shouldn't harm your case or your phone. And that should take any of that adhesive off. Um, they usually don't leave a lot of adhesive re residue. It's more of that, you know, that thicker boogery stuff, um, that you can just manually pluck off. So, but yeah, I would say whatever, um, whatever solution that you feel would be okay to use on your phone or your phone case would be perfect. Um, and alcohol was just the first thing that I thought of um, to work with that. All right. Well, let's see. Oh, somebody mentioned to try the Tom Kenyon Lightship CD. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Oh, and somebody else said they use lighter fluid for the sticky residue, which is that naphtha, not the not the butane that's gas, but just the, the pouring lighter fluid. Um, Gooby gone. Yeah, goo gone is not a bad one either. Um, goo gone, boy, that stuff is potent. And then somebody just mentioned baby oil. Right, Laura, that's very true. Um, you know, any of the, the mineral oils will also... Uh, take that sticky off. So, all right. Well, let's see. Um, try and think if there's anything else. I uh, believe it will be, gosh, it might just be April the next time we get together here. Um, or maybe not. Yeah, I guess I don't have anything else of new and exciting happening. Um, I will show you guys that Alchemist Taurus when I get it done. If it's something that's pretty phenomenal, uh, we'll post some pictures on social media about it. And um, if it's phenomenal, we will definitely start making it um, because people have been asking for that larger size of Taurus. And um, otherwise, looks like we are complete on our questions. So thank you all again for taking your time here today and spending the time with us. Um, let's see the other announcement. Uh, we, we, we have that pyramid conference coming up April 2nd. Um, if you haven't signed up for that, I think they're charging like 55 bucks, but it's a full day, full day deal. I think that's, um, Gosh, I think that's a week from a week from tomorrow, actually. And uh, that that should be a pretty good conference. Um, I'm going to be speaking mostly about the, the tools and qubits and some of the pyramids, but we're also going to do a meditation to go into the Bosnian pyramid. Um, and depending on how much time I was going to do some some kind of just introductory with the artifacts and the Atlantean, um, the global Atlantis concept. Uh, so we'll just see how much time we have. But anyway, that was the only other thing that I know of that's coming up um, is that pyramid conference on April 2nd. 
And let's see. All right. Well, thanks again, you guys, for being here. I appreciate the support. And, and here at the studio, oh, my goodness, we really appreciate the support. Um, you know, we, we keep making tools. We keep creating more and more overhead because we know someday um, we're going to be so busy that we're not going to be able to keep up. And, and I thank you all for, for that assistance too. So again, if you guys know of any influencers that you would like to see receive the tools um, that do unboxing videos and such, or that would just wear the pendants and talk about our products to other people, to their people, please do let us know. Cause um, that's just one way that we're looking to start reaching out some more. So, all right, have a phenomenal weekend, everybody. Um, Happy spring, happy fall. We'll see you next time. All right, take care.